So picture this, you're going to go on a lovely little trading route and it's a long way away. 7.9 days for a one-way trip. That's too long. Way too long. For 15 days in total, you could have been doing drugs, you could have been enslaving people, and you could have been doing all those lovely Rimworld things. Introducing the Carriels Intercontinental mod, a lovely little mod that will solve all of your problems very easily. And as this mod has been very recently updated to 1.5, I thought we'd give it a go. This is a mod that has been out for a few months now and it is extremely highly rated. There's a few other mods that could be used instead of this one, but this one I like for very specific reasons. Let's get started on those reasons and look at the content itself. So as we all know, first impressions count and that's the first bit of content that we need to look at. The Steam Workshop page. What is there and what can we see? Everything here that I'm expecting. There's a lovely little picture. There's a contents of what's in the mod. We've got mod recommendations. We've got known issues. This is a very standard mod page and that's what I like. Everything's here and everything's of a quality I expect. We could maybe have some more details here and there, but I don't need to know anymore. So as we look at what is actually in this mod, I need to quote the great Greek storyteller Aesop. Good things come in small packages. And now I am not talking about my small package and nor am I talking about the quality of it. This is all the content that we have here. There are five carriels, five airships, there are five vehicles to get us across the continent. That's it. Now, as we've seen in previous mod reviews, the amount of content doesn't necessarily matter as long as it's of good enough quality and is balanced with how in how it is. And we'll cover those later. So what are these five little airships? We have the standard airship, the Kirov airship, the standard carriel, the ox carriel, and the vertigo carriel. Every single one of these does a different job, has different abilities, and I like that. I like that they're all unique and you can be using them at any situation that you're in. Sometimes you'll want to use the more later game ones and sometimes you might want to use the early game ones. Every single one fits a purpose. And as stated at the beginning, these things are going to be used for trading. So obviously every single one of these can be used as a pack animal. Um, you can take them on the uh, trips, you can store them full of luggage, you can put them full of trading stuff, you can take your colonists and go to the ancient dangers and everything and use them to loot that up. Um, these are very versatile and they do operate the exact same as transport pods, um, which I will go further into later in this video because there's some issues that come with that. So with the uniqueness that comes with these intercontinental airships, three of them have added weapons and abilities to them. Uh, the Kirov airship has a steam gun um, and it can also self-destruct, which is very very classic of an airship really. Uh, the Ox Carriol has a cannon that shoots fairly slow but quite powerfully and the Vertigo Carriol which is just an absolute menace has a laser minigun attached to it. Now all of these weapons take up fuel as they are used as ammo um, so for balancing that kind of makes sense um, but as a content perspective it's a lovely little touch honestly it means that they can actually have a use um, in battles, in raids, and all of the above. And so that's about it in terms of content. That is pretty much all that we can look at. We have the five airships, we have the three unique abilities slash weapons with them, and that is it. I, as I said earlier, this is a small mod, and if it is pulled off right and it is of a good enough quality and balancing, it is fine. And honestly, I'm quite happy with the amount of content here and the quality of it. I think some vehicle mods can go too deep into things, and I like the simplicity of this. I like that there's just five. There's not too much choice, and I'm actually gonna use all of the things here. Um, for content, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. I would maybe quite like to see the standard airship and the standard carrier hall have a different weapon or so. And I maybe would like to see a few new um, carriers and everything for getting around the planet. So next, let's look at the quality of this mod. Now, as per usual, I'll be using the Camera Plus mod here that has been, thankfully, updated to 1.5. Um, I'll be using that to zoom in on everything and look at everything. Now, as usual, Camera Plus mod gets a 10 out of 10 in my books. Now, looking at everything and zooming in very nicely, the graphics are all fantastic. They all look really nice. They're nice and crisp. They're nice and detailed and textured. I love them all. They are all so unique and different, uh, but at the same time, they kind of do fit in the Rimworld aesthetic, um, especially the standard carol I think fits in perfectly. Uh, the Ox carol and the Vertigo carol also fit in very nicely, and I like the, the variation the airship and the Kirov airship bring to different technology levels. Um, overall, graphically, this is looking very nice. Then, as mentioned earlier, the carriels that are added by this mod are all based on the transport pods. They act like a transport pod. That is what they are based off. So, the transport pod takes off and goes up in the air and disappears. It goes off into these heavens and then comes back down eventually. Um, the carriels and everything do the exact same thing. They take off and fly away. They go off on their merry way and go on their journey in a lovely aesthetic way. Um, it's not a big detail. It's not something that you might notice after a long time of using this mod, but it's those little details that make a big difference in my opinion. A nice little touch by the mod creator here. 
Now, in terms of quality, that's going to be about all we're going to be looking at today. As I said, it, this is a very small mod. It's very simple in what it does, and it does a very good job of it. The fact that everything is kind of based on the transport pods in base game kind of means that we are going to be slightly restricted in what I can show you and what the things can do. I like what I've seen. I think the quality is good enough, and it does the job. And that's what I like about this mod more than anything. It does what it says on the tin, and that is what we want to see, honestly. We don't want it to be too complicated. It does it just right. Um, so I think in terms of quality, I'm going to be giving it a 7 out of 10, a very standard rating. I think that we could see just a little bit more love put into things, a little bit more care, a little bit more thought, and maybe a few custom things to add in this mod just to make it feel a bit more loved. Um... Still a very good score. Next, let's move on to the balancing. So next, let's look at balancing. Now, I need to start off here and say right at the very beginning here, comparing this mod to base game, which is what we do in these mod reviews, this mod is unbalanced compared to base game, okay? This mod needs to be used in a mod pack, all right? The base game just cannot keep up in any shape or form. Whilst I don't think this is a problem, it doesn't quite fit in with RimWorld in that regard. First, let's look at the resource cost. So looking at the resource cost for all of the airships, um, it all kind of makes sense. I don't think anything is necessarily too expensive. I don't think anything is necessarily too cheap. Um, for what you're getting and the abilities that you're going to be able to gain throughout your playthrough, it all kind of makes sense, honestly. Um, I think the airship stuff could be a little bit more expensive. I think the standard carryall could also be a little bit more expensive. Um, but I think in terms of balancing, it's not too bad. Very easily accessible, and I don't think it's going to make that too much of a difference on your gameplay as long as you are not abusing it. So next, let's look at the trading capabilities of these things. Let's look at the standard airship and the standard carryall as our baseline level. The standard airship has got 200 kilograms of capacity and the standard carryall has got 450 standard capacity. These are the two least out of all of the airships and let's compare it to the pack animals within RimWorld. I have an alpaca, a muffalo, a yak and a bison to start with. All of these carry less than the standard airship. Um, they're, they're, they're not as good in any way and they're not as efficient. Uh, the only animal that I reasonably found that was even comparable was the elephant that could carry 300, um, which is obviously better than the standard airship. That is the only time that I can see the animals in RimWorld in base game to be oh, any comparable to this mod at all. Um, <laughs> I cannot emphasize enough how unbalanced this is compared to base game, but obviously I'm going to recommend you to be using mods with a lot of this mod at the same time. So next, let's look at the tech requirements for the items in this mod. Now, the airship and the Kirov airship are going to be the least technologically advanced stuff for you to be have access to. That's what you're going to be using for a lot of the time within your playthrough. Um, it's fairly easily accessible and it's not that expensive. The standard carryall, the ox carryall, and the vertigo carryall are where things get expensive. They require fabrication. Not only that, they have their own tech levels that you need to achieve. Not only that, but you need tech prints. Two tech prints for the ox carryall and the vertigo carryall, making them extremely expensive and actually quite hard to access things. Um, from a balancing perspective to base game, it's nice to see that these very powerful uh, things aren't actually that easily accessible. But from a modded perspective, it's not difficult to access these with the trading and traveling that you will be doing with the other items. Overall, for balancing, this is a nice little touch. I mean, the tech printing does make it more in line with the base game than what it could potentially be. Um, so I think overall, for balancing for this mod, comparing it to the base game, which is what we do in these mod reviews, I'm going to give it a 5 oh out of 10. I think if you were, uh, I was going to be reviewing this as part of a much larger mod pack, then it would be a lot more balanced. So next, let's look at compatibility. The known bugs that are within this mod and with, well, this fit in with your playthrough. So let's start off with the bugs and everything. There are already conflict issues known within this mod with the SRTS mod and Combat Extended. SRTS, if you're using this mod, I'm not sure what you're doing because this literally does the exact same thing. To why are you doing that? Uh, Combat Extended, however, is a very popular mod, and I can totally understand why you would be a little bit upset at the mod conflict there. Um, it's kind of a bit of a bummer, I'm not going to lie, but not the end of the world. Um, we're looking at the Steam Workshop page and the discussion and everything. There are a lot of complaints about issues and bugs, things not loading in properly, things not working properly, and I think this ultimately comes down to the fact that this is paired with the transport pod stuff in base game. There are a lot of issues with that. I personally could not 
redo these in game with the amount of time that I was doing everything. Um, but I could totally see where they were coming from. However, it was very nice to see that the mod author do does make the effort to address these issues and address them and try to fix them. Um, I, it's nice that they, the a mod author, after all these months of the mod being, being out, is still trying to make things better, and I can appreciate that from him. And then how does this mod fit in with your playthroughs? What are you going to be using it in? I think you're going to be pretty much only using this mod in any playthrough you're doing that is industrial themed and above. I can potentially see arguments for maybe a steampunk vibe playthrough for the Kirov airship and the basic airship, but that's pushing it a little bit. I think in terms of any other style that you're going to be having a great time with any playthrough you're doing that's heavily modded with the anything industrial and above. This mod is going to fit in with pretty much any playthrough you're doing as long as you're using it with a lot of other mods in order to have a good time. So I think on that, for compatibility, I'm quite happy giving it a 6 out of 10. Only being marked down because there are quite a few issues that are reported and everything within this mod itself. Next, let's look at my mod recommendations. So last but not least, let's look at my mod recommendations. Now, it's very important to note here that I will only be recommending mods that are updated to 1.5. We're currently in the unstable branch of RimWorld, and unfortunately, a lot of the mods that I want to be able to recommend you have not been updated yet. But I have selected a couple here today that I want to be able to show to you. First, the Better Explosions mod. This one is actually recommended with this mod, um, and I think it fits really nicely. Next, we have the Better Ancient Complex loot. Very necessary if you're going to be going on adventures and everything. And obviously, how are we going to build everything with the lack of resources? The Quarry mod is the answer to that. And last, I have the Geological Landforms mod. A very nice mod for when you're going out adventuring and everything, and you want to look at things and make them look a little bit more pretty. Now, like I said, a lot of mods I want to be able to show off to you guys today have not been updated to 1.5. I'm confident in the future there's going to be a lot more that can be updated to 1.5 and then you're going to be able to put them in your mod packs. Um, I think that this mod is so easily accessible to whatever mod pack you're going into apart from anything that's kind of early tech that you need to be able to use this. Um, I think that this is a very competent mod in terms of what mods you can use with this and it will just fit in with everything. The versatility is ridiculous. So on that fact alone, the mod recommendation, I'm going to be giving it a 9 out of 10. Let's move on to my conclusion. So here we are at the end of this review. Now I want to state very nicely here that this mod is fantastic. I think this mod is a great little addition for when certain other vehicle mods are maybe slightly too complicated and you just want something that does the job. This mod fits in really nicely with so many playthroughs and I think that is a fantastic part of it. The simplicity, the versatility of it, it's almost a utility mod with just a lot more specific content. So for content, I did give it a 8 out of 10, for quality 7 out of 10, balancing 5 out of 10, for compatibility 6 out of 10 and mod recommendations 9 out of 10, giving it the grand total score of 35 out of 50, which on my scale gives it a solid B rating. This is a very good score for this mod and I think it does fit it really well. There are some improvements that could be made, some extra content could be added, some more airships, and I do think the compatibility and the bugs that, are, that have been reported with this mod have let it down, otherwise it would be a solid A tiered mod. Now this is obviously a 1.5 mod review and I will be continuing these mod reviews for the next couple of weeks whilst I'm cooking up a new series and a new playthrough. If you have any recommendations for mods to use in that, please let me know in the Discord or in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching today's video, guys. Make sure you like, subscribe. Make sure you tell your mum as well. I'll see you next time. Thank you.